Hi folks, I'm The Lost Mapper, and in this video, I'll be showing you the basics of working with polygon layers in QGIS. We'll be going over when to use polygon layers, how to create a polygon layer, how to add, edit, and delete polygons, working with polygons that have holes in them, otherwise known as rings, and some basic polygon styling. You'll likely want to use polygons when you want to define an area, a geometric shape with three or more sides, that has attributes that you will either want to visualize or analyze. So some examples of that might be the boundaries of countries or of cities, postal codes, forests, or parks, or things like bodies of water, like ponds or lakes, or even rivers, if they have varying width. So we can look at a few examples here. This is the countries of the world, and these are polygons. Uh, we also have the Great Lakes, uh, which are polygons that are not not necessarily connected. Uh, we can also see that there are places where these have holes in them. Uh, and another example is some forest areas. So we can see the borders of DeSoto State Park next to the Little River Canyon National Preserve. For this video, I'm gonna pretend we're digitizing some land usage in a nearby area, and we'd like to keep track of public use land versus private use land. So to start, we're gonna head up to the layer menu and choose create layer and then new geo package layer. Uh, for the database, we're going to create a file inside of our project directory. So I'm just gonna name this polygons. For the table name, I'm gonna call it land use and the geometry type, I'm going to use polygon. We have some other options in here, such as multi-polygon, curve polygon, and multi-surface. Multi-polygon is when an area is defined by multiple polygons. So you could, you could think of a, a forest that has two unconnected pieces. Uh, and curved polygon is a polygon where the lines are defined by curves. And multi-surface is the multi-part version of curved polygons. I'll be doing a future video that's actually going to talk about multi-part points, lines, and polygons. So we're going to choose polygon, uh, and I'm going to add a couple of fields here. So the first one is going to be a name, which will just be a string, and I'll add that to the list. And then we want to track the land usage. One way we could do this is by creating a usage field and in the text could either be public or private. I think what I'm going to do is create a private field and use Boolean. So Boolean is either true or false. Uh, if it's false, then it's not private. And if it's true, it is private. So I will add that as well and click OK. So to add a polygon, we're going to check, uh, make sure we have our land use layer selected. We're going to head up to the digitizing toolbar and toggle editing on. And then we're going to head over to the add polygon feature button. Uh, you can also hit control and period. And we are given a crosshair and we can start to define an area. So let's, again, this is all fictional. So I'm just going to make up an area. I'm going to click to start my polygon and I'm just going to make a little rectangle. And when I'm done, I can either right click or hold down control and click to finish that polygon. And I'm gonna name this uh, public park and I'm gonna leave private unchecked. And then let's say somewhere over to the right here, let me move the map a little bit. Over to the right, I'm going to make another area. and name that, I don't know, private residence. And I'm going to check private. And right now we can't really tell the difference between these two. So what we can do is click on the land use layer and we can go to view panels and layer styling. And we'll open this up a little bit more. And what I'd like to do is change this from a single symbol to a categorized symbol. And the value we're gonna use is that private field that we set up. And we'll head down here and click classify. 
and it'll figure out there's only two possible values, so that's false and true. And for the true one, let's make the color red. Let's see here. Standard colors, make that red. Head back, and then for the false ones, we'll make it green. So it's a little more welcoming. And then we can close that panel. The tools for editing a polygon are similar to the ones for editing a line. So we make sure that we have our layer selected and that we're in edit mode. And then we can head over to this vertex tool. And now as we hover over different vertices and lines, we see that we can edit them. So to adjust the vertex, we just need to hover over it, click on it, and then move it and click again to place it. If we wanna add vertices, we can hover in the middle of the line till we get this plus sign, click on that and add an additional one. We also have the ability to move entire segments. We can click on the line, move it to where we want it and click again. Another thing we can do is select multiple vertices. So one way of doing that is just clicking and dragging a rectangle over the ones that we wanna move, and then we can move those. I should also add, if you ever make an edit that you wanna undo, you can hit Command Z and that will undo those changes. If we encounter a situation where a portion inside of the polygon should not be designated as part of it, we can create what's called a ring. So in order to do that, we need to enable the advanced digitizing toolbar. So we can either right click on the toolbars here and head down to advanced digitizing toolbar, or you can go up to the view menu, choose toolbars, and then turn that on. So now we have a new toolbar with a bunch of options on it. Uh, we're gonna focus on this set here. So there's one called Add Ring. I can click that, and then much like adding a polygon, I can add a ring by clicking and adding points, and then right-clicking or control-clicking to end. And now we have a space in there that is not defined with the same attributes of the polygon. We can also edit that ring so we head up again to the vertex tool and it works the same way. We can hover over a vertex, click on it and move it. We can also find the midpoint with the plus sign and add an additional point. And we can also grab entire lines or segments and move those as well. Finally, if you don't want to keep that ring or you made a mistake, you can head up to the delete ring tool, click on that, and then just click inside of the ring that you wanna remove and it's gone. Now let's say that we wanted to find an area in here that's only not part of this public polygon, but actually private itself. You might think that you can just create a new polygon and draw it inside of here. And let's just call this private and check off private. And we can see we've got a red polygon inside of a green one, but what's really happening is the green polygon is behind it. So this area in here is defined as both public and private. We can get a peek at that by using the move feature tool. And if I move this green polygon around, you can see that there's no hole in it. I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna undo adding that private one. What you wanna do in this situation is use the fill ring tool. So this little guy here, fill ring. And what that's going to do is make a ring inside of the polygon and then fill it in with another polygon that shares those boundaries. So let's click on fill ring and then we're gonna draw a little portion here and hit control and I'm going to call this private and click private. And now we've got that ring inside. If I were to move the green feature, you can see that it does have a hole in it. 
So that's an important, important piece. Now, if I try to edit the vertices inside of this piece, you're going to see that they don't move together. And that's because currently it does not know that they are sharing that vertex. So if you want to get around that, you can enable another toolbar. So let's right click here and we're going to enable the snapping toolbar. And there's two things that we want to add. One is turning on snapping. So you can click this little magnet or press S. And the other is this enable topological editing. Now there's currently a bug in QGIS where if your project coordinate reference system and your layer coordinate reference system are not the same, then topological editing doesn't work. So what we're going to do is temporarily change that. So if I double click on my land, land use layer here and I go to information, I can see that the coordinate reference system is 4326. And if I head down to my project one, I can see that in the bottom right corner or I can go to project properties and head to CRS. I can see that it is currently 3857. So what I'm going to do is change it to 4326 for the time being. And now that tool will work correctly. So now if I edit one of these vertices and I move it, you can see that the adjoining polygon also moves. And this also works if you are adding points, uh, if you are moving segments. It's now keeping those together. I can show you that again by moving the feature underneath, and you can see that there is in fact a hole there. And I'm going to undo that. So let's say we're in a situation where we want to update this public polygon to also include this little lake area, say, it got purchased and added to the, to the public use. One way we could do this is by using the vertex tool and kind of awkwardly adding additional vertices. It works. Uh, if it gets more involved, it's kind of a pain to keep adding additional vertices. So I'm going to undo that. And what we can do is use this reshape feature tool. So once you click on that, you have the ability to basically draw an additional polygon and it'll get added to the existing one. So as long as I'm starting inside of the existing polygon, I can draw additional lines. I can once again, control or right click and that will finish that polygon. I'm going to undo that. And if you start from outside the polygon, it's actually going to end up subtracting. So I'm going to click here and sort of take out a chunk of the polygon and right click again. And that's taking that out. I'm going to undo that. And if you have a combination of those, it's going to actually add and remove as necessary. So if I start here and click outside and then dip in and then outside and in and out. And if I finish that, you can see that it's adjusted it so it added where it's necessary and removed where it's necessary. If I go and add another feature, say up here, when I get close to existing vertices, it's actually going to highlight it in purple. And if I click, it's actually going to join in that same exact location. So I can use that to make sure that two features are butted up right against each other. I right click to finish that. I'll call this another private area and check private. And again, if I want to move those tools using the, if I want to move those points using the vertex tool with the topological and snapping on, they will move together or not. All right, so I noticed I made a little mistake here. When I was adding this polygon, I missed these interim points that I had made. So when I go and try to move this vertex, you can see it's actually drawing multiple lines and they're not connected. Now I could fix that by adding these points and snapping them together. 
Um, but I think what I'd like to do is undo all of that. Uh, here we go. And then what I should do is when creating this new feature, I want to make sure that I'm snapping on all the points that I created. There they are. And finish that. Oops. And now if I use the vertex tool and try to move one of these, okay, now I'm just seeing one line. Excellent. Polygons have both a border and a fill. So that gives us the opportunity to style those things differently. So let's head into the symbology for our land use and let's go to the private equals false. And if we click on the simple fill, we see that we can change the fill color and style and then the stroke color width and style. So for example, let's change the fill style to uh, horizontal, gives us some lines. And let's also change the stroke style to a dash. And let's make the stroke a little bit thicker. And then if we head out to the private one, let's change the fill style to X's sort of suggesting no. And let's make the stroke a ridiculous width of one and make it a dotted line. And let's even change the color to black. And head back out. So that's just showing you quickly that polygons have two attributes that you can style, uh, what they look like inside and what the border looks like. And that can help visualize uh, the attributes of that polygon. Thanks again for watching. As always, if you have questions, feel free to leave a comment. If you're enjoying these videos, a like and a subscribe is always super helpful. In the next episode, I'm going to be going over multi-part features for points, lines, and polygons. That's when you have a single feature that consists of either multiple points, multiple lines, or multiple polygons. See you then.